I'm proud to be part of the Tattooed Pianist Club. That's a thing, by the way. Hello, hello everyone. I hope that you are doing fantastically well. Likewise, I hope you like this new layout. Well, it's not really a new layout. I'm just in a different part of my house. Now I'm in my living room and you can see things that are much more personal and close to my heart. So greeting cards that I've received, my calendar. That's an autographed photo of Carl Bum. That's a photo of me with Andre Gafrilo a little cup that says Kansas on it, as that's where I'm from. Thank you so much for clicking on my video, which admittedly is a little strange for me to make because up to this point, I have been doing my best to come up with content and produce content that is helpful to fellow classical musicians. Whereas this video, quite frankly, is all about me. And that's why I was so surprised when you guys requested, requested a so-called tattoo tour, which is a really big thing here on YouTube. But um, it's a pleasure for me to make this video. And I had a second session on my back piece yesterday. And although it's not completely done, it's so close to being done that I feel comfortable and confident sharing it with you guys. So a little bit of a backstory. I have loved tattoos since I was a teenager. I don't think I saw a tattooed person until I was 15, really. And it's not that my family was conservative. I grew up in Kansas and perhaps I just wasn't surrounded by people who had tattoos. But there was a moment that's very vivid in my memory. I was walking in downtown Kansas City with my mother and I saw a young woman with a huge dream catcher tattoo along the side of her body and I was hypnotized <laughs> I was enchanted by this tattoo I thought it was incredibly beautiful uh, at the time I was thinking to myself what would be meaningful enough to have on my body forever I was so convinced that I would regret any decision I would make in regards to getting a tattoo and although my parents never blatantly said this, I think that they, well, they didn't, they don't like the idea of tattoos and they looked down upon tattoos. I think that they had a negative opinion about tattoos and that was in a way transmitted on to me. It's as if tattoos were only made for a certain kind of person, which of course isn't at all true, um, but somehow, I held the belief for the longest time that, look, I'm a classical pianist, I'm very well educated, I can't get a tattoo. And that's another thing that held me back for the longest time. I don't know what that piece of hair is doing there. Flash forward several, several years later, I got my first tattoo in 2018, three years ago. So I was 24. I was living in London and this first tattoo is a very small tattoo, this 38. And coincidentally, 38, The Romantic is the name of my first CD and DVD. I think I have a copy here. Yeah, so this is my CD and DVD, 38, The Romantic. It's the same font as the tattoo I have on my arm. And so a few of you have messaged me thinking that I got this and celebration of my album, which is not the case, actually. This tattoo is a memorial tattoo for my father. He passed away in 2017 from pulmonary fibrosis. And I got this tattoo in February, which was eight months after my father had passed away. And I had been thinking about getting this sort of tattoo for a few months since he passed, but I wanted to give myself time to continue to go through the grieving process before making this commitment. And I chose the number 38 because my father was born in 1938. It's that simple. And consequently, when I recorded this album in November of 2018, eight months later, I decided to make an album that was 
38 minutes long, also in memory of my father. That's the story. As time passed, I think I began to find myself a little more. And I thought to myself, if I got a tattoo for my dad, why not get a tattoo for myself? I love myself. I'm worth it to myself. So therefore, I'm going to get a tattoo for myself. And this is the second tattoo I got in 2019 here in France by a local tattoo artist who lives, no, she was working in the next town over from where I live. Uh, it's on my hip. I'll be including the picture here. And I basically walked into the shop, just gave her a couple ideas and she came up with this sketch. We modified it a little bit and that's the story. So there's three flowers here. There is a rose, there's an apple blossom and lily of the valley. And each of these flowers actually does have a specific meaning for me <clears throat> or rather to me. The rose is the national flower of the United States and I'm American. So I guess, I suppose I chose a rose to honor my past. I chose Lily of the Valley because it is the flower of May and I'm born in May and apple blossoms for two reasons. One, I grew up on a farm on a ranch in Kansas where we had apple trees. And second of all, there is a Korean birthday flower chart, seriously, where each day has a flower. And look, the 11th of May is an apple blossom. So in my mind, I said, okay, absolutely, absolutely perfect. Let's get it done. I was convinced. And I was really happy with it. I felt powerful. I felt more feminine. And well, after that, I started to get tattoos more quickly, that's for sure. Following that, I got my third tattoo, which are, which is this gorgeous piece right here. Uh, this is probably my favorite piece. Um, and I did a lot of research before getting this done. This is an artist who works in Lyon. I'll be adding a link here. And I didn't choose these flowers for a particular reason. This was a flash design that the artist had shared on his Instagram page and I adored it. In the original flash, as I did choose to modify it, the flowers were quite a bit bigger. They extended further and there were two snakes with the tail here and the head here, symmetrical on either side. And I honestly thought that was the coolest thing ever. But on the other hand, I thought, look, I'm a classical pianist and I'm just starting to get into tattoos and this is already a big piece. So I opted against the snakes. Look, I love them. They've healed beautifully and I think that they represent myself. I think it's a very elegant and timeless design. So moving on to my fourth tattoo, I got this tattoo to honor myself, to honor my younger self as this is the first tattoo that I ever wanted to get. Nine years later, still thinking about that tattoo. So I said, might as well get it done. And it is this phrase right here, which translates to, I will not give in, and even something stronger. And the reason why I got this done is because it was Archer Rubenstein's motto. I remember watching an interview of him when he's in his 90s, and he mentioned that, and I don't know why, but it really hit me hard. In your book, My Young Years, you say that you adopted very early in life a motto expressed in a Polish phrase. Nie dam się. Nie dam się. Well, the translation is not quite easy because it is a little strong in Polish, but it means actually I will never give in. I will not give in with much strength. Give in is something a little bit weak, weak. There is no word for it, you know. I will fight it off. I, I, I will be brave. Well, I don't know, something like that, but strong. And that's kind of how I've lived my life. I will not give in. I will keep on going. I will persevere. I will stick up for my beliefs. And this is a little reminder. Okay. Moving on to the fifth tattoo is my moth tattoo, which surprisingly was confused for a swallow in one of my videos. I don't really see how it looks like a swallow, 
Um, I'll include another picture here as always. And this was a flash day tattoo by the same artist who did my roses. No particular reason why I got this done. It's not like moths have such a, um, an important meaning that I would like to look at, look at it every day. I just thought that it was beautiful and I got it done. It's that simple. This is something that I want to iterate. Not all tattoos need to have a meaning. A lot of my tattoos I simply got for the aesthetic because I like how they make me feel. Finally, the last tattoo I'm going to be showing you, my sixth tattoo is my back piece. Uh, and you can see that it is healing. Sorry. If you are interested in getting this tattoo, I want you to know that people are going to judge you no matter what. And the essential is to be happy within your own skin. And of course, this isn't, this doesn't only apply to getting a tattoo. It could apply to the path you choose to take in life. Um, but remember that you are valuable and there's only one of you and you owe it to yourself to be true to yourself. So do what makes you happy as long, of course, as long as it doesn't harm others. Do what makes you happy. It's really that simple. Have a great one.